Good morning to you. Friday morning, Keith Finnegan with you on the 12 Midday Comet Lines Open. If you do want to get through to us on 091 and 53995. Today in the programme, though, we're looking at the Ryanair situation. When is this going to just end? We're also looking at VAT, VAT, when it comes to hotels. We're also looking and speaking with the Galway Feminist Collective. They're having a special weekend, and the World Meeting of Families is nearly upon us as well. The banks are not playing game when it comes to the fodder crisis. KBC have decided to sell mortgages. And we have the City Tribune headlines with Dave O'Connell. We're looking ahead to the Clifton Arts Festival. And uh, Ray O'Connor joins us at Connemara 100, celebrating 10 years of running there. And uh, much more between now and 12 midday. Comment lines open on 091 77 and 53995. It's Friday. Good morning to you. Yeah, and we may go back to this greenway. I, I was talking to somebody this morning before I came on air, and uh, we did a piece yesterday with um, Minister Kieran Cannon, and then we did a piece with Peter Feeney, and then we did a piece with Sean Kniff uh, about the greenway, and I've had various correspondence. It's a very divisive situation we find ourselves in, and some people are not happy, and some people are not happy with the politicians, and some people... So what I'm going to do is later in the programme, I'm going to read you the letter in relation to uh, uh, Irish Rail, which we referred to on yesterday's programme, which was in the Tomb Herald. And I'll give you the contents of that um, shortly as well. First off, the Ryanair situation, Owen Curry is uh, with uh, Travel Extra, and he's our resident expert on this one. Owen, good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Keith. I really thought at this stage, Michael O'Leary and the rest of the team within Ryanair would have sat down around the table and figured a way out of this. But they seem the hands seem to be tied on this one, Owen. Well, it's, it's which tables you sit down uh, around. Uh, that's the first problem that uh, is becoming apparent to everybody. There isn't a one-stop shop. Uh, you know, it was, I think, uh, Rick Kissinger many years ago talked about Europe, said, who do I phone when I want to talk to Europe? This is uh, Michael Mary's issue now is, uh, who does he phone when he wants to talk to the European uh, uh, pilots? What um, we've seen is, uh, you know, possibly a, a kind of competition, but, you know, amongst them, competitive attention-seeking. Um, the European pilots would have watched and they'd have been very closely in contact with what was happening with IALPA. Uh, didn't uh, stop a lot of um, flights. We've, made, we've been on the programme talking about it before, but may generated a lot of publicity. So all of them have uh, a series of uh, issues, different issues, different local concerns. And Ryanair's approach hasn't been to sit on their hands, as you might, might be inferred. Um, they squared off uh, the Italian market and the British market in January, and they seem to have squared off the Spanish market in February. They also, by the way, signed a deal with 250 of the Ryanair pilots in, in uh, February uh, in Dublin. Uh, that sometimes is, uh, is, is lost to the fact that yeah. the 95 pilots that are striking uh, his, uh, uh, you know, have generated so much publicity. 250 Dublin pilots are flying through the strikes because they did their deal back in February. What we see now is the unions that you would have expected to be quite uh, belligerent, um, Veronica uh, cockpit in Germany being uh, the most important of them. And it's the most important not because uh, Germany is one of the biggest markets, it's still it's way up there, it's about fifth or sixth, but it's because the one that it's the one that Ryanair have targeted for growth. And Veronica have tried to prevent this happening all along. They lobbied the German Parliament against uh, allowing Ryanair slots at Frankfurt, and they lobbied the German Parliament on uh, German government on Ryanair not getting any of the assets from Air Berlin when Air Berlin went back spectacularly belly up. The reason for doing that is not just uh, belligerent. The reason is that the Ryanair model scares them as it does pilot unions all over uh, Europe in that. Um, the contracts are based out of Ireland. Ryanair operates in 37 markets. It has uh, all its employees on uh, under Irish contract law. Um, that's been challenged in the courts, and the challenges uh, are still going through. But uh, you know, the big ones have been, have have always fall, found in favour of Ryanair. The Valencia Court of Appeal being one of the more significant because Ryanair is so big in Spain. So what's happening is we have a, uh, an airline based in several different countries, uh, but we don't have one union to call. If the Ryanair were, was Southwest, a base of model in Southwest in America, yeah. there'd be one US trade union. You wouldn't have a separate one for North Dakota and Texas. So 
again, going back to the, the so I stand corrected that they're, they're not sitting under the table with their hands tied at all. So they're, they're dealing with it. Uh, but it's it's the multiplicity of countries that they're dealing with in unions uh, that is causing this problem. But they seem to be coping because they seem to be shifting people from flight to flight. Yeah, they're cancelling. So uh, they must have capacity their own. They, they're, they're actually, the reason we're, this is happening in August and not in February is that uh, this is when they will be stretched to capacity. But you've got if you're going to pick a fight with an airline, um, you, the Ryanair are the ones in best position to do this. Uh, all through winter, they were taking uh, uh, between one or two, about six a month, new aircraft arriving. They can sw- they can move them around very deftly. And uh, what the unions have been looking at as ways of punishing um, that p- uh, strategy of W patterns, which they are well capable of doing. And some of the strategy of the strike this morning is to deliberately damage uh, the flights that are going on to places that weren't directly affected by the strike. And we've seen a sort of a spotting impact, the German early morning flight, uh, that was the big target this morning, and uh, they seem to have had uh, quite a bit of success with that. But let's face it, they stopped about 4% of the overall flights that Ryanair are flying today. It's not a big impact, but it, they also know, and we've made a point on this program before, that the impact of the number of flights stopped isn't... Uh, it isn't really significant. The real impact is on forward bookings and confidence and the trashing of the brand, which is central to this strategy. And then what happened during the week, and maybe it's not a fair question to ask you, where I was reading just in, in some of the newspapers that if you wanted to book a flight short term, because of all this going on, they lobbed 100 euro onto the price of the of the fare. Uh, they didn't lob 100 euro onto the price of the fare. What, the way that works, uh, fairly simply, is if a flight gets cancelled, uh, the... the, the the computer system takes that into account and it, it sends off flight, it sends off seats according to the number of seats that are still available. So obviously if you're taking 400 flights out of the system, yeah. the number of available seats suddenly diminishes. There's also an allegation, you didn't ask me, but I'll answer the question, that uh, competitor airlines, for example Air France and Lufthansa, and in our case Aer Lingus, lobbed uh, an extra charges and push the prices of flights up because they saw right now we're going to strike uh, there's a dividend to be made here that tends not to happen with human intervention that just tends to happen with the algorithms of the flight booking system that if uh, you know as people did they booked an Aer Lingus flight they had to get to a wedding they weren't sure right now we fly um, the, the number of available seats plummets and the prices go up so supply and demand very much so you said that's all done with computer then not manually at all uh, it, 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 there is uh, the, the airlines don't talk about this this is one of their dark uh, secrets well, tell me more, but, uh, please. <laughs> <laughs> but there is, uh, there, there is manual intervention. I'm pretty, uh, you know, I mean, this, this is something that Michael Leary and myself have trashed out a bit, and she's got quite angry about me and my suggestion of this. But I, I, I'm pretty uh, certain that um, when <clears throat> uh, Connacht or Munster uh, get, get an away uh, rugby fixture at the uh, at the high end of the season in February, March, or April, human intervention moves in uh, to make sure the flights are at a premium price. Mm. So just going back to the opening question then, because I, you've corrected me, and thank you for doing so, because I, I have a I, I, it was, I, I, That wasn't meant to be a correction oh, at all, no, no, because no. That, that's the general perception. Yeah, uh, how, how are all these fires breaking out? What, what are the firemen doing uh, with the hose? And um, that's basically uh, what the answer is. They, they're hosing down the markets that really matter. There are three markets that matter to run there. Britain, Italy and Spain, they do more than 20 million passengers out of each of those three. They do seven or eight million out of a, a group of about six more and that's it, Jeremy's environment are in that category. So they, they have sorted themselves for the majority of their market then? You, you would think that, but it's not as, it's not as easy. Nothing in aviation is as easy. It's a very, you see, aviation has moved from the uh, public sector to the private sector very recently. So the attitude of the unions is very still public sector unions. Uh, you know, basically, you can you can ask you know the hand that we continue to give because the government will bail will bail out an airline, an airline won't go bankrupt. So what uh, we've seen um, in Britain 
with all the competitive attention seeking of the trade unions in uh, across Europe, I mean the Scandinavians' impact is still is very very small, but they've generated huge publicity in Scandinavia this morning. But they've seen the Brits saying, uh, "What's all this about? Why aren't we in uh, this little game?" And the Italians, uh, a little bit of uh, sleeping, uh, waking uh, up there, and the Spaniards as well. So the three big markets are watching what. The uh, second division markets are doing what the pilots in the second division markets are doing. Not start stopping up a lot of flights, but generating a lot of publicity, damaging the brand, um, ratcheting up their bargaining power, and they're saying, uh, we don't want to be left out of this. So you, you could actually see a return to those three big sleeping markets. Well, listen, thanks for keeping us informed, but um, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Michael O'Leary himself said that once upon a time, so he's, he's getting the publicity, and people are still booking with Ryanair. I think uh, the fact that um, the pilots are cranky can be, you know, uh, when your people are saying why are the pilots cranky is because the, the fares are lower. Um, the actual thing is pilots are being paid more. But um, I do think that the message that Ryanair is still the cheapest has been not been damaged by the, the, um, the series of strikes. The uh, guys in the braces, of course, who uh, have, have a lot of power as well, and they're the ones Michael O'Leary will listen to uh, rather than the trade unions because the share prices come down. They've been saying that the profitability of the, of the uh, model uh, may be affected and also that fares might be forced up in the longer term for that. But we remain to see, that all remains to be seen. These are all the variables, the unknowns, as uh, um, Donald Rumsfeld used to say there are no known knowns and unknown knowns. Okay. All right. Listen, Owen Corrie, thank you for joining us uh, from Travel Extra uh, today. An insight, a different insight indeed, totally, into that Ryanair debacle. You might remember during the week, by the way, last week, sorry, uh, we had.